It's the top job in America. President of the United States. That's POTUS. And it comes with your own mansion, a private plane, a huge staff, and the most powerful military in the world at your beck and call. But the catch? You're blamed for everything. And that means everything. The buck stops here. Who you gonna call? You, that's who. And every four years you have to apply all over again. Whatever happens, the president is responsible to the American people. So let's check the job description. The first job the Constitution gives the president is Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and of the National Guard when it is activated. This means that the president, as a civilian, controls the military as opposed to some countries where the military controls the civilians. If the nation is under attack or when Congress declares war, the president alone is in charge of the military response. Of the three branches of the U.S. government, legislative, executive, and judicial, the executive branch is by far the largest, employing almost two million civilians, plus another two million military members. And the president is the boss of all of them. This gives the president a lot of people power. POTUS is in charge of 15 executive departments whose leaders are called the cabinet. The president is the chief diplomat and represents the nation in foreign affairs and has the power to negotiate treaties but the Senate must approve them by a two-thirds vote. The Senate must also approve the president's nominations to the Supreme Court and for senior jobs in the executive departments. The president also has the power to pardon people or forgive them for their crimes. In an age of nuclear weapons and global pandemics, some experts criticize the imperial presidency, saying that the president exercises too much unchecked power without Congress. Should the president have powers that are not written in the Constitution?